Okay, we're back. Mr. Hands is back. Woo! Anyway, um, you have a couple of choices if you're having to do this at home and you don't have to run out and buy a bunch of different stuff. This 3-in-1 oil, Marvel Mystery Oil, sewing machine oil. Any kind of a nice light oil will work fine for this. I've got something a little different in mind for it. And this is one of the things we produce here too. That you can't buy because I didn't put up a shop yet. But we call it Lashley's. Lashley's uh, leather. Uh, Lash, Lashley's whipped cream is what it was. It was originally developed for... Uh, preserving and what do you want to say resurrecting really dead leather uh, whether it was a bridle uh, saddle uh, whips or what we mainly used it on here and uh, I had a neighbor brought a I think it was an 18 foot long black snake whip that he had gotten down in Florida 30 or 40 years ago and it sat in the back of his truck for a lot of years it sat coiled up you know stuffed in a barn corner for a bunch of years and he brought it over and I liked it he, he uh, it was a pretty decent whip and I said here give me that for a few days and I treated it with this stuff. Uh, it, I have a treatment method. It involves uh, not hot heat, but something warmer than uh, uh, sitting out in the sun. And uh, getting this stuff to soak down in to the whip. And I treated it a couple of times. Uh, maybe two coats I don't know and then I worked it a bit and the best way to work a whip is by snapping it by using it and uh, anyway uh, I told him to come meet me at a local restaurant which isn't there anymore the damn thing burnt down and uh, he met me there and I don't know I just I get a bug up my ass and do crazy shit so here's a crowded restaurant at lunchtime, and a, you know how they they usually have narrow walkways. <laughs> I cracked that 18 foot whip down the walkway, <laughs> and it sounded like somebody shot a rifle off. Nobody dropped any plates. There was that immediate gasp from everybody that probably thought that I don't know they walked into a restaurant where people do bad things the restaurant owner of course knew me and I mean he just that just goes along with the kind of stuff he'd expect from knowing me and uh, anyway my neighbor looked at his whip and he couldn't believe it was the same whip that's how good this stuff is now what I'm gonna do is just spin it around here I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing I don't know how it works as a love lube, so don't ask me that one. Probably would work okay. You never know. If they dig up your coffin 100 years after you're dead, they might find that's the only piece that still looks good. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't had beer yet. You ought to see me when I'm drinking. It gets way worse than this. Okay, so what I've done, I gave a pretty good coat all the way around it. And again, we cleaned this so that there's absolutely no chance of grit. I would put a coat inside here, and I still may. I just want to see what happens here. Because the real thing you want to have happen 
is that the oil makes the leather swell a little bit. And this stuff will soak in and also make it swell. I can feel it pushing air out here. only lightly lubed there so I want to put a tiny bit more in. Another reason to not over oil is this is a blower. It blows the dust off of whatever you're cutting so that you can see your line to cut it. And if you put something oily in there it's going to get on your wood and that's going to screw up your ability to finish the wood most likely. So that's another reason why I wasn't real keen on putting oil on that. I am going to put just a tiny, tiny bit up and down the tube. Make it smoother. Make it happy. <coughs> Whoever saying, I think you did that before, well, you're probably right. Anyhow, let's see. Wipe this off here. It and it smells good. It's got a, it's got a great smell for it. I mean, if you had one of those old, a real leather belt, you know, not this plastic leather crap, but if you had a real leather belt that's gotten tight and nasty because it's just so dry. You can rub that stuff into it, you'll think it's better than it was when it was new. Okay. Okay, that's pumping a stroke of air every time. So then at this point, I want to put uh, this back. And then we'll reinstall it. And I'll show you the other part of this. Under here, hanging, is a plastic tube. This tube fits on the bottom of that little air pump. And it pumps air through the tube. And it goes up here. Comes over to here then to a metal fitting that's also a tube that's closed off a little bit to give it a little pressure and that's the blow tube uh, for your woodwork keep the sawdust off of it okay now I'll be putting that back on in a minute but what I want to do is check and make sure it's clear so I'll put my hand under the tube It's clear. Okay. So, I laid this right by this part so that I would remember to put it on. And what I'm going to do is line up the two holes. Because if you try to stick a pin through something and you have it turned sideways and all you've got there is solid, it ain't no fun. You're going to do a whole lot of cussing, bend up your pin, probably hit it too hard one time and zing off into a world full of shit all over a floor in the next room, and you'll never find it again. So, if you take my advice on it, do it this way. Now, we remember I pulled the pin out from this side. It's going back in the same way. I'm going to bring these up and eyeball them, but now I'm going to cheat. You see this little, the prick? <laughs> I'm going to stick that through there and see if I can catch. Yep. 
the eye hole, and I did. Now, I'm going to take this pin. It's a split pin. They're, they're, in case you don't know what they are, they call them a roll pin or a split pin. And I don't know if you can really see it that close, but there's a line going uh, longitudinally down it. That's a split. And because this is spring steel, what happens is the pin you choose to be a little bit bigger than the hole it's going into. And then when you tap it in, it squeezes. And it holds itself in there out of spring tension, which is a great thing. Um, I am going to do one other thing, though. This is another Wonder product. I don't get a damn dime from these sons of bitching people. I don't even know if they're real people. I just know the product. It's called Super Lube. My friend Ed, and you'll hear about him a lot. I talk about my friends on my videos. Um, Ed is, uh, I, I don't know what you'd call him. He's a, like a master craftsman on things, a master electrician. Uh, you name it, he knows what to do. And when I say electrician, I don't mean wiring a house. I mean wiring up your circuit board. Anyhow, this uh, Ed showed me this stuff about 10 years ago and it is a silicon uh, synthetic grease it's actually food safe and it is the most amazing stuff I if you were really to go through every place around here you'd probably find 20 tubes of it on the schooner I know there's at least two tubes possibly three uh, I try to keep them somewhere nearby so that whenever I'm working on something that might need it, this is the stuff. Uh, and it can take some heat. So even though this uh, little pin here, it's going to get a lot of use, like that. So it's a good idea. To grease that doggy up. And I see another good idea here too. I'm going to stick this here for right now. I just saw a little bit of dirt and shit in here. What I'm doing is cleaning out the uh, slot that this thing goes in. And here's why. That, that's more sawdust and crap, but that's also stuff that would interfere with the lubrication that we're going to put on it. And, uh, I don't know, make something that might heat up. So, uh, it's an, it was a good idea to do that and avoid a problem. Now we're going to go back to the super lube. And what I'm doing with it, pushing it all the way through the hole. Now a lot of it is going to come back out when I put the pin in, but that's okay. Okay, it's coming out this side now. Now I'm going to wrap it around. Take my little pin. Hmm. Hmm. 
Gotta take a break. Okay, we're back now. I thought I had misplaced the pin, but what happened is I had set it over here and then laid the uh, tube down on it. Now I'm gonna grease the pin. That does a couple of things. One, it'll help it go in, and two, it will give something uh, for this uh, piston to move on. So we bring it back around and match the holes up on this to the holes up here. And then I'm going to put this in there to hold it. start the pin back in and believe it or not it's just about there clean up mr. fingers here and we'll use this uh, bunny hammer and just light taps I'm supporting the arm doing this so that a uh, heavier tap isn't going to cause that arm to to uh, snap now I'm looking it over everything looks absolutely good there the next trick is going to be to lift this up, I want to have a look underneath of it and see how they threaded that air tube. So an easy way probably would be to do this. That way I can get down to it. this on the bottom of, of that and everything looks pretty good underneath of it the motor here in case anybody's wondering is a 1650 RPM 1.7 amp motor so that explains a few things and we'll show you some more in a minute Like you can see it, that's a good thing. 
Alrighty, so now this part was very interesting. These wheels, they are basically immaculate. There's no dust on the wheels, there's a little bit on the counterweights. And I'm just going to wipe it off. And there's also no rust on the counterweights either, which is a good thing. Okay, so now we take our super lube again. And we're going to grease the gear wheels. And really all I'm after is just a light touch. And uh, there's no need to grease bearings here. They're sealed bearings. You wouldn't really be able to grease them that easy. around a little bit. Put one more little shot up here. Okay, now what I did is I didn't put a lot in there, but I spread it around the wheels as much as possible. But the real spread is going to happen when, uh, when I crank it up. And before I crank it up though, I want to put things back together. And let me see what I have. Here I have what I call the magic screwdriver. It's a four-in-one screwdriver. If you can find one that's made well, this one isn't made all that well. You have a slotted, big slotted, you have a big Phillips. Here you have a nut driver for whatever that size was. You can pull this out and now you have a little Phillips and a little flat blade and this is a uh, nut driver for something a little smaller than these. And you talk about not having the right tool when you want to do something. You know, there's always that Murphy's Law of you think you have a job done, but you just ain't going to get it done because some absolutely necessary tool that you need isn't going to be there. This thing will save your ass. I would recommend when you find one that's made well, Buy three or four of them, throw one in the trunk of your car, put one in your toolbox, and one in whatever your kitchen drawer is that you uh, put your junk in. Okay, so we're going to put back this plate. I want to 
take these screws out. This over here, and this is where I'm going to put the screws. And there are two more. Okay, that one is solid. So, I think what I want to do is use this to break it free. Okay. Oh, we have that. And then there's one last little thing I just kind of noticed. And it really wouldn't hurt. Put a tiny bit of lubricant on this shaft because it goes down through that little plastic dirt cap and uh, that dirt cap could actually be what was making the squeal that I heard but we're going to listen for the squeal in a minute So we put this back on, you just slip it in like that, bring it up here over the holes. When I'm doing this kind of stuff, I like to start the screws with my fingers. And the reason for that is so that I don't end up with a cross thread and then blow out my screw hole and have to uh, recut it, re-thread it and um, go with a larger screw. It just makes more sense to do it that way. Once you get it in there and turn it a couple of times, you know you're set up. Another thing when you're tightening screws on a plate, don't make them gorilla tight. 